Hello, this is Sean Larson with uh, Strategic Global Alliance Manager with AWS. Thank you for joining us today for a webinar on how you can build trust between your security and developer teams. I also have John Martinez, Director of Cloud Architecture with Palo Alto Networks, and Parthik Patel, Director of Cloud Security with Informatica. To start us out, security is job zero with AWS. We don't have a business if we can't secure our services. We know that it's going to come up eventually. The CISO will find out, and we want to get ahead of it. Prevent data patterns from emerging and introduce new ways to improve security as we transition workloads to AWS. Most of all, we bring it up to earn trust of our customers. Your data on AWS represents your business and your livelihood, the trust with your customers, and the privacy of, of security of real people. For many enterprises, even those several months, or even a couple of years into their moves into the cloud, it's still new territory. If you've operated data centers and traditional networks for 40 years, some of this is going to feel new. Customers want to know that they can maintain a sense of control. So we help guide them as they chart new territory. Lastly, security has always been just playing hard, and our customers want to get ahead of it. At AWS, we have the concept called shared responsibility model. We look after the security of the cloud, and our customers look after the security in the cloud. AWS is responsible for protecting the infrastructure that runs all of the services offered in the AWS cloud. The infrastructure is comprised of hardware, software, networking, and facilities that run AWS cloud services. Customer's responsibility will be determined by the AWS cloud services and partner solutions that a customer selects. This determines the amount of configuration work the customer must perform as part of the security responsibilities. For a long time, organizations had to make a choice between moving fast or maintaining a high degree of security. One of the fundamental benefits of the cloud is that you, this lets you do both. Our infrastructure is architected to be one of the most flexible and secure cloud computing environments available. For startups to big organizations, speed always matters a lot. My goal for this session is to show you how we can move fast and stay secure at the same time. Many organizations face challenges maintaining and managing the security of their on-premise infrastructure. But why? Predominantly, the lack of visibility. In our on-premise environment, it can be difficult to know the, what resources and what data are out there at any given time, where it is moving, and who is utilizing and accessing it. For example, it requires expensive complex tooling to get accurate real-time asset inventory. Most organizations just don't have the level of visibility that they would like in an on-premise environment. And without visibility, it's challenging for organizations to adequately secure their infrastructure and their data to meet the security and compliance requirements. The other aspect is a low degree of automation. Another typical challenge is trying to get rid of the manual processes employed to remediate issues. Think copying, pasting information from one tool to another, or manually applying patches. It's difficult to automate key security tasks due to issues, such as interoperability of third party and homegrown tools. Manual processes lead to inconsistent execution, longer wait times to address all systems, and in most cases, disrupts the customer's experience. So the goal of automation is to programmatically handle tasks that would otherwise be done manually by IT staff. This is much easier in the cloud, as you will see. This combination of lack of visibility to their own environment, coupled with a low degree of automation, comprises an organization's ability to move quickly and effectively secure their on-premise infrastructure. With AWS, your control where your data is stored, who can access it, and what resources your organization is consuming at any given moment. Fine-grained identity and access controls combined with continuous monitoring for near real-time security information secures, ensures 
that the right resources have the right access at all times, whether your information is stored. Reduce risk as you scale by using our security automation and activity monitoring services to detect suspicious security events like configuration changes across your ecosystem. You can even integrate our services with partner solutions to support existing workflows, streamline your operations, and simplify compliance reporting. Automating security tasks on AWS enables you to, to be more secure by reducing human configuration errors and giving your team more focus on other work critical tasks for your business. Select from a wide variety of deep integrated solutions that can be combined to automate tasks in novel ways, making it easier for the security team to work closely with developer and operation teams to create a deployed code faster and more securely. For example, by employing the integration of Palo Alto Network's Redlock API security solution or VM Series Net Generation Firewall solution into AWS's Guard Duty and Security Hub solution, our joint clients are able to quickly discern the threats affecting the AWS environments just with a few clicks of the AWS console. Security at AWS is top priority. That is why we listen closely to our customers to offer both a secure cloud computing environment and innovative security services that satisfy the security and compliance needs of most risk-sensitive organizations. Today, AWS protects millions of active customers around the world. Our customers represent diverse industries with wide range of use cases, including large enterprises, startups, educational institutions, and government organizations. The scale and global reach of these customers gives us a broad visibility and deep perspective on cloud security, knowledge which rapidly reinvests back into the leading edge infrastructures and services we offer. Security at AWS starts with our core infrastructure, custom built from the cloud to, and designed to meet most stringent security requirements in the world. Our infrastructure is monitored 24 by seven to ensure the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of our customers' data. The same world-class security experts who monitor our infrastructure also build and maintain our broad selection of innovative security services, which can help you simplify meeting your own security and regulatory requirements. As an AWS customer, regardless of your size or investment, you inherit all the benefits of our experience, tested against the strictest of third-party assurance frameworks. AWS is diligent about your privacy. Because our customers can deeply care deeply about data security, we have a world-class team of security experts monitoring your systems 25 by 7 to protect your content. With AWS, you can build the most secure global infrastructure, know, knowing you always own your data, including the ability to encrypt it, move it, and manage retention. We provide tools that allow you to easily encrypt your data in transit and at rest to help you ensure that only authorized users have access to it using keys managed by our AWS key management system or managing your own encryption keys with cloud HSM. We also give you the control and visibility you need to help demonstrate that you comply with your regional and local data privacy laws and regulations. The design of your global infrastructure allows you to retain complete control over the regions in which your data is physically located and helping you meet data residency requirements. AWS supports the most security standards and compliance certification than any other offering, including PCI DSS, HIPAA High Tech, FedRAMP, SEC Rule 17A4, EU Data Protection Directive, and FISMA, helping satisfy compliance requirements for virtually every regulatory agency around the globe. In addition to the security of your R environment, AWS makes a wide range of security tools and features available for your customers. Depending on the security of the application, or the content you choose to deploy, AWS and its partners offer over 700 tools and features to help you meet your security objectives. Now I'd like to hand it over to John Martinez, Director of Cloud Architecture for Palo Networks. Thank you, Sean, for that informative presentation. Good morning, everybody. My name is John Martinez. Um, I lead a team of cloud architects 
whose uh, responsibility is to do research and uh, uh, for the benefit of our customers, our partners, and our products. Uh, so thank you everybody for attending. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, security for the cloud and how to uh, ensure that we have that trust relationship. So a couple of statistics there. Um, Gartner uh, is pointing out to us basically something that um, is, is what we've seen with our own customers as well is that a lot of the failures in the cloud, uh, despite uh, AWS doing an awesome job of giving us a secure platform with which to build our applications and run our applications, uh, a lot of what we do is basically, a lot of the issues that come up are basically on our side of the fence, on the customer side. So Sean talked about the shared responsibility model. Um, and we see some of the statistics that Gartner found out um, and, and the link down at the bottom that I wanna point out for everybody who wants to take a deeper look at some of those stats. But uh, really, we'll be talking a, a lot about those uh, five different trends, but mostly around the risky configuration aspect of, uh, uh, of the security findings. So uh, a whopping 32% uh, of organizations have at least one cloud uh, storage service exposed publicly. Um, this is talking about uh, S3, uh, bucket compromises and 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 public uh, buckets, et cetera, right? So uh, we want to make sure that we know this going in that um, a lot of the cloud failures are basically on our side, on the customer side of the responsibility matrix. And uh, with that, you know, a, a, a very a very keen statement by our CSO is that really it's a problem that's created by ourselves. Uh, so it's not you know it's not necessarily nefarious. Uh, actors that are out there, um, although there are those, so we definitely do need to watch for those. Uh, but a lot of the configuration errors that expose us to those nefarious actors are our own doing. Uh, and um, it's something that we need to keep a look at. And why, why is this? Why is it that we're falling into this trap? And it's something that I've spoken about before. Um, it's basically when we're designing or when we're architecting our applications uh, to move to the cloud or uh, whether we're cloud native, really we see security as an afterthought. Um, so a lot of us that have done uh, DevOps uh, and designed our CI CD pipelines and our application life cycles, et cetera, you know, we, we really take security for granted. Um, and it's a cultural thing. You know, this is something that I've talked about in the past, like I said, where culturally uh, our DevOps folks and our, and our devs are, uh, wired to uh, release our applications at lightning speed, either continuously or or semi continuously, where we're we're trying to get our product to market as fast as possible. Um, so really, we need to take a step back, and we need to partner with the security folks to make sure that security is not an afterthought. That security is part of our development uh, life cycle, our our development uh, design and architecture when we go into the cloud. And I'll be speaking a little bit about the future uh, later on in the presentation. So cloud adoption does raise a few questions for our CISOs that are out there, our security folks uh, that are out there. And I'm gonna put on my security hat. Um, and a lot of the questions that we have about the cloud are really about things that Sean talked about earlier. Uh, there are a few of the, the statistics that I talked about as well. It's really having to do about, uh, about visibility, right? Sean talked a little bit about that. And that visibility is around what is it that we're running in the cloud? Which teams are running in the cloud? Why are they running in the cloud? Have they thought about compliance? What's going on, right? And that's because the, the, CISO, the CISOs are responsible for uh, making sure that the brand is secure, for making sure that our environments are secure, that the enterprise is secure. Right, and so that's really what it comes down to is visibility. Do we have the right level of visibility, uh, not just across the dev teams themselves, but visibility that's bubbled up to our infosec teams, our security architects, our DevSecOps folks, right? And so these, these are all very valid questions that we need to ask ourselves and that CISOs are asking ourselves. So as developers, we should also be asking these questions. A big part of the visibility challenge traditionally has been that there's a lot of different point products. 
um, you know, the the best of breed definitely does uh, does so this uh, mentality where we have a lot of different products, but really as an industry, we haven't taken a, taken a whole lot of time in making sure that that visibility is centralized, that that visibility is bubbled up and given to our, our SecOps folks, our InfoSec teams, our CISOs that are responsible again for the enterprise. And so uh, we have this lack of visibility uh, in our cloud native tools, um around uh around compliance around visibility of controls uh also as well on our open source tools what libraries are we using what are we building into our applications uh through our monitoring um our identity stacks uh and you know again on the on the forefront of technology is container security right so we have a lot of these point solutions a lot of them could be great you know and uh but we, we really need to figure out how to tie those things to have central visibility. So what's Palo Alto Network's approach? So our approach is that we need to take care of our foundational cloud security. This is, this is, the, this is the, the strength of our Redlock platform where we provide you, as Sean mentioned earlier, we provide you with that customer-centric view, that customer responsibility view of our foundational security. This is configurations around your VPCs, the networks, the storage, uh, compute, et cetera, right? You know, all, around all of those services. Um, how is my compliance configured? You know, how, how are we scoring across the different compliance standards that security and our audit teams are responsible for? Um, so that, that's one great aspect of the platform as well, is that we can take a look at, if I was to do an audit today, uh, or an attestation or a recertification today, where would I stand against SOC 2 and uh, PCI, et cetera? Uh, key management. This is an important topic, you know, as, as our applications shift off uh, in, and outward towards uh, containers, et cetera, where there's less compute, serverless compute, et cetera, IAM becomes a huge part of our security footprint. Uh, where, 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 where are my users, where are my identity entities uh, you know, are we using best practices that AWS tells us to, to practice, like, you know, using short-lived tokens for authentication, like STS, et cetera, right? So that this becomes a huge, important aspect of our security fun, fun, fundamentals. Uh, our credentials and, 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 and actions and identity, how are my policies configured? Am I giving the right entities the, the right access and limited access to those, to those resources that are running out in AWS? Uh, what about my network security? Am I looking at flow logs? Am I looking at suspicious and malicious traffic? Uh, VM series becomes an important aspect of that. Uh, and how, how is all of that uh, part of my security approach and visibility? And then again, you know, the data security aspect of things. Am I looking at malware? Uh, you know, what, what, what's going on there? So really, uh, our approach is to unify all of these different aspects of security and give our customers that visibility that they need uh, to be able to make the right security decisions and, and frankly, to react and to uh, manage those incidents that do come in. So here's a little uh, architecture diagram of the Redlock Cloud Security Platform. Uh, what we're looking at, you know, foundationally down at the bottom is we start with the AWS APIs. What are the configuration of the resources? So I go and I read, I discover all of the resources. I look at their configurations. These are across many different AWS uh, services themselves. I look at user activity, network traffic, flow logs. Uh, and I'm also uh, via third party integrations ingesting uh, host vulnerability information and data like from Tenable, Qualys, et cetera. And what I'm doing is I'm collecting all of this data and I'm normalizing it so that I can make some security assessments around that data. And I expose that uh, to our customers via uh, an asset inventory compliance reporting. I allow my customers to go and create uh, these very powerful searches across all of this data so that they can get to the misconfigured resources uh, and anomalous uh, traffic that they need to to make the right decisions. Um, and then on the outbound side, uh, very, uh, a very new addition to Palo Alto Networks is our, our Demisto SOAR platform where I can go and take automated actions 
on those vulnerabilities and those configuration issues that I found. So for example, if I wanna go tie that into my ticketing systems like ServiceNow and Jira, et cetera, uh, or Slack, for example, I can go and, and, and implement chat ops so that my, my, my people that are responsible for uh, incident response can get to those alerts in a much quicker form and, and take action against that. So at Palo Alto Networks, we're, we're, we want to be your partner in cloud security. We want to we want our our customers to be able to go and uh, not just gain that visibility. Again, that's a huge and important part of security in the cloud, but also to be able to uh, uh, shift that over to the left and speed up their deployments and to to uh, look at issues before they become issues. But more on that later. I'll be speaking about, but we definitely do want to be your partner in security uh, and uh, give you that visibility, uh, allow you to stay more compliant and rapidly detect and, and react to security issues as they come up. And now I'm going to hand it off to Pathik Patel from Informatica. Thank you, Sean uh, um, and John. Uh, this is a great uh, setup. Uh, step up on explaining what's going on with AWS Redlock and how we are helping our customer to secure. Um, so to introduce myself, I'm Patrick Patel, Director of Cloud Security at Informatica. Uh, I'm responsible for a team comprising of uh, security engineers, architects, and in incident response team. And our primary goal here uh, at Informatica is to secure customer data. Uh, primarily, uh, Informatica is used by uh, Fortune 500 and Fortune 100 companies, and uh, and 85% of the Fortune 100 companies use Informatica. We are also uh, more than a billion dollar in annual revenue, uh, 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 comprising of 4,200 plus employees uh, spread across uh, 72 countries. Um, and uh, as of right now, Informatica Cloud is processing more than 8.5 trillion cloud transactions per month. So this is the scale where Informatica is operating. And underneath that, uh, Informatica is operating various uh, AWS accounts. And uh, this AWS accounts are managed by a different DevOps team. Uh, the reason behind that is uh, we Informatica also sells multiple products within their product portfolio, such as data management, uh, data integration, data quality. So all of these products are segregated into their own AWS accounts and managed by a different team. Um, so this basically proposes a challenge, which is uh, we, uh, as a security team, we need a way to monitor entire security across all of this AWS account. And we need to be uh, providing the same tools across all of this development teams, products teams that they, that are operating with this product. Uh, also, as we have distributed uh, teams and AWS accounts, uh, monitoring network flows becomes a big challenge. We have to ensure that the VPC flow log that is offered by AWS is brought into our central uh, tool. And using that, we can perform network security monitoring rather than just like collecting all the VPC flow logs. Also, I want to mention that Informatica uh, is a SOC 2 and HIPAA compliant uh, cloud. So our customers, when they have sensitive data, whether it's uh, health data or any other uh, customer uh, sensitive information, they can process that within our compliant uh, cloud. And SOC2 and HIPAA is just a start for Informatica uh, as we uh, cater to uh, 72 countries and global list of uh, public and private sector customers. We have a growing need of compliance frameworks. So uh, at, at Informatica, <clears throat> we need to ensure that at a given period of time, point in time, we are able to see our status, our uh, 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 our status of our posture against each of these uh, compliance frameworks. And this enables our CISO and security operations team 
to ensure that we are compliant each and every day rather than just the end of the quarter or at the end of the year when auditors arrive at the uh, Informatica side. Um, so Informatica went out and we wanted to figure out like what is our solution to this problem? How do we solve this challenge using one point solution rather than uh, uh, solving, uh, rather than buying a tool that are solving a bucket of problems that we have? So the first, the thing that uh, stood out from a Redlock tool is it was a one-click integration across all of the accounts. We probably have uh, more than 20 accounts right now offered uh, offering different products, and uh, we basically wrote a custom cloud formation script uh, with the help of Redlock team to enable Redlock across all of these accounts. And when we enabled, uh, <clears throat> it included uh, the functionality at the IEM level, at the resource level, and also at the VPC flow log level. So we did not have to go and enable individual uh, functionality, but we were able to do it with one script, one click across all the accounts. Another benefit that came out uh, using the Redlock was the rule set engine. Uh, this rule set engine, uh, using that, you can quickly classify policies based on the teams and high value resources. Uh, this rule set engine and alert uh, configuration also allows us to, uh, uh, also allows us to configure different routing to different teams based on their pro product usage. Uh, Redlock also integrates with uh, vulnerability management tool at Informatica, we use Qualys for our vulnerability management and we integrated Qualys with uh, Redlog to provide us uh, deep insights into our infrastructure uh, to evaluate which are the high value targets in needs of uh, patch prioritization. And on top of this is the network security monitoring, uh, where we can do the user behavior analysis, data exfiltration, IP reputation uh, monitoring, and so on to ensure that our network, our infrastructure is protected uh, from the bad actors. Moving on, um, how Redlock is helping Informatica with our uh, uh, securing customer data journey. The first is, uh, it, it, as I explained, that it, it provided us with the full visibility across all the accounts that we had. And using this visibility, it is acting as a pseudo inventory. Basically, this you can think of this as a CMDB, your uh, configuration management database, where all of your assets inside the cloud are recorded and recorded with the configuration that they are using. So this is a single pane of view where you can evaluate and analyze that how each of your con uh, resources are configured and how they are talking within each other and with the outside world. The next benefit is the alert routing. Uh, we were able to customize Redlock alert such that uh, we, can, uh, we can use the AWS metadata available within the AWS, such as the tags, the resource IDs, uh, which region, which availability zone they are located in, which accounts they are in. And using all of this metadata, we were able to customize our alerts such that the alert can be routed to either security operations team, either DevOps team, or the incident response team. This basically enables us to ensure that we cater to our customers, our internal customers that we have, and provide valuable information for their day-to-day -day job. Also, using this alert mechanism, we integrated our alerts into Jira. So everybody knows that <clears throat> uh, developers work on tickets. They have either they use ServiceNow, Jira, or any other ticketing mechanism that they have, and they like to uh, finish their work using the ticket. So. Uh, Using this alert routing, we also configured alerts to go to our Jira such that our development teams can fix the issues during the CICD and build pipeline. So this helps uh, of, uh, development teams to quickly react on the issues that we are seeing in the production and fix it for the next deployment, next build. 
and eventually integration with the Lambda function. AWS offers uh, a great service called Lambda, which basically executes a snippet of codes for you. Um, so to resolve a red log alert, some of the low hanging fruits or very primitive alerts that we have, we are relying on Lambda function to quickly fix the issues that we found through the uh, red log uh, uh, activity. So overall, to summarize this, uh, I would list out uh, the following benefits uh, using AW, uh, with the help of AWS and Redlock. The first one is reduced response time. So as of right now, uh, Informatica Cloud is hosting more than 125,000 resources inside AWS. So just looking at this number, it's a mammoth task for us to monitor this and respond to each and every alert that is being generated. Um, so when you put humans behind it using your homegrown solution, it becomes very complex and also response time is increasing. So Redlog helped us shortcut all of this uh, tooling and it provided us with a reduced response time such that all the uh, analytics and detection activity is done within Redlog and as soon as Redlog uh, identifies an issue or violation, it can be redirected to, to a appropriate team using uh, our incident management system or a Jira workload. And this also uh, has a side benefit of integration with DevOps uh, cycle. So as we are giving this, as we are putting our violation and issues into the Jira, DevOps team can see this into their everyday workload, uh, everyday work planning, and using that, they can update their automation script. Uh, to give an example here, um, many of our alerts in the uh, early days were around the security groups. Um, our security groups were either too permissive or not appropriately configured. And the reason behind that was our automation script, our Terraform script that we're using, that our DevOps team were using underneath. And it was, uh, before red log days, it was hard for us to pinpoint each and every security group and bring it up to the development team because it's basically an email-based conversation, uh, a manual conversation. Uh, with the help of red log alerting, we are now able to create tickets and these tickets are now linked up to the DevOps Terraform uh, scripts such that they can identify and say that, yes, this is the faulty script and this is what I need to update it before I push out the next uh, version of the code. Earlier, I mentioned that Redlock also provides us a single point of view uh, because it integrates with uh, all of our AWS accounts, its VPC flow log, uh, it provides a network monitoring, it basically is a single pane when we have an incident. Whenever uh, Informatica <clears throat> comes across a security incident, one of the first tools that we look into is the red log. Uh, we go into the red log query language uh, and using this query, uh, using, the, uh, using this query uh, format, we can look into our uh, AWS infrastructure in the real time which means that we can look up by the resources that AWS has, we can look up by the IP address or any event that is found within the security incident. So this basically helps us do our streamlined monitoring. The, uh, our monitoring procedures and runbooks are now including run, uh, red log as one of the essential tools that, uh, they need, that our incident response team is using. And ultimately, all of this brings a trust into our system uh, in our operations. Uh, uh, informat like my team is responsible for building the uh, security and trust with the customers. So whenever customers are storing their uh, property and confidential data, they, they can be uh, 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 sure that Informatica is doing the right thing in securing their environment. But to achieve this, we need to be in a lockstep with our development team. And uh, for development teams to quickly act, they need a precise pres uh, prescriptive information 
that can help them uh, identify what are the issues that is being found in our running environment. And because of this, it basically enables more and more uh, CI/CD uh, development models where you can integrate uh, your uh, production infrastructures information into the development model. Now I'll talk about why Informatica has chosen AWS as its cloud service provider. Uh, Informatica started this cloud journey three years back, and at the time we had to choose uh, the cloud providers that is the most scalable and highly performant. Uh, as, as I described, Informatica works on customers' data, whether it's data integration, data uh, uh, application integration, data quality, or data management. All of this basically requires that we our cloud is highly scalable, and meets the needs of customer data. And to do this, we are we are relying on AWS such that at any given point of time, whenever our customer uh, requires more resources and more bandwidth, uh, we can rely on AWS to scale out our in uh, scale out Informatica Cloud. Along with this, uh, AWS is also a pretty secure platform. Uh, we as, in, as Informatica is a SOC 2 and HIPAA compliant, we also have to rely on our uh, downstream service provider for their uh, security compliance as well. So when we looked at in, uh, AWS and their list of compliances and the security uh, uh, tools that they offer, it was a plethora, there was a plethora of choice available for us. And this enables us to quickly move with our customer need. And on top of it, uh, AWS is, provides also a flexible infrastructure. So when I say this, what I mean is, uh, if, if you need to store a key value pairs or a big data sets, uh, do you need to just run a bad jobs or code of snippets? All of these things are available within AWS. Based on your needs, you can choose the AWS services that will perform the best for your needs. And this quickly enables you to move fast and securely to satisfy your customer needs. Moving on to uh, Redlock and the Palo Alto Networks uh, tools. So the benefit that we saw with, uh, with Redlock was it was a platform tool. Um, we looked at the Evident and Redlock. Fortunately, both of them are Palo Alto Networks product as of today. But earlier when we looked at it, Evident was only looking, uh, was only a rule engine. So it, it, has, it had rules and it was uh, checking AWS resources against this rule and providing alerts. But Redlog was a platform uh, service, which means that not only it looks at the AWS resources and performs the uh, rule check, it also supports the compliance uh, compliance framework so that you can uh, you you can gain the visibility into your compliance posture it also provides you with a query language using which you can do a real time incident investigation and the biggest benefit that we saw was the integration of bbc flow logs uh, if if you guys uh, as of right now uh, Informatica processes more than uh, 160 GB of flow logs every day. And this is a mammoth amount of data you need to analyze and make sure that you are detecting the security and anomalous event within this uh, data. Uh, when Before Redlog, we were using the same tool to do this, and it was mostly a DIY security. So we had to define our own rule set and uh, queries such that we can find uh, various issues. But with the help of Redlock, this became pretty easy. Uh, Redlock uh, takes the responsibility of defining this rule. And as they have the collective knowledge of uh, Palo Alto networks uh, and the attacks uh, surface they see across the, their global infrastructure, uh, they are quicker at defining this rule set that will detect the anomalies uh, within our B3 flow log. Uh, also, on top of it, um, it uh, Redlock helped us with the user behavior analytics. For example, 
uh, what our users are doing within our environment, uh, uh, what account they are using, what type of actions they are performing, and if those actions are fall, uh, fall into a normal behavior. So this is these are the few reasons why uh, Informatica chose Redlog as their preferred platform. Now, I wanted to uh, take a deep dive into how Informatica has implemented the Redlog within uh, its cloud. Um, so on your left, uh, we have the AWS accounts. Uh, as I described earlier, we have more than 20 production accounts processing customer data. And all of these accounts are now forwarding their cloud trail and VPC flow log data into Redlock. And uh, we also use Qualys as our vulnerability management tool. So Qualys is also connected with all of these AWS accounts that are processing customer data. And uh, we use Qualys uh, cloud agent. Uh, these agents are basically installed inside your EC2 resources. So they provide you with a real-time vulnerability data uh, inside the Qualys uh, tool. So as as we have the real-time vulnerability data collected by Qualys, we bring this information into the red log. So now using the cloud trail, VPC flow log, and vulnerability management data, we are able to paint a picture of what our infrastructure, what our publicly exposed and uh, systems are doing. And using this, we can uh, we can do a patch prioritization, alert routing, and many other services. So on your right, I'll talk about what how we are doing our alert management using Redlock. Uh, so Redlock provides a, a pretty robust uh, alert configuration uh, 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 system where you can use AWS metadata, your vulnerability data, and the flow log data to configure that what this alert means and which team it should be routed to. Um, so the, one of the approaches that we have taken is based on the severity. For example, if it is a critical alert, then this alert is always responded by our incident response team. So all the critical alerts that are generated by Redlog, they all first go into uh, our they, they are all first page to our incident response team. So uh, our 24 by 7 operating incident response team takes a look, look, at, look at all these critical alerts and quickly goes into the incident response uh, procedure to ensure that we are responding to the, this violation. On top of it, these alerts are also sent to the incident messaging system that uh, we have internally. This helps to do a broadcast of all the subscriber of the channels. And using this, uh, we can also notify all the other teams that might be responsible for a uh, given resource, resource which violated the policy. So during when incident response team is working on an incident, those uh, responsible team, product teams, who actually created that resource can help with, uh, with the incident remediation. Uh, and now, uh, as we uh, direct our critical alerts to the incident response, we also have the high, medium, and low uh, issues uh, detected by Redlog. Uh, all of these high, medium, and low issues are now matched uh, with the uh, quality vulnerability data, and basically we make a, a, a prioritization decision. So for example, if there is a, a severity, uh, sorry, CVS score more than seven, uh, expo, uh, uh, detected on a given machine, and that machine is a publicly exposed. Um, we need to patch that as a uh, as a, one of the first instances during our uh, patching cycle. So this kind of information <clears throat> is collected uh, during the Redlock alert uh, configuration, and this gets directly fed into our ticketing system. So. How this helps is when uh, these tickets are sent to our develop de uh, <clears throat> our product team, whether it's a development team or actual DevOps team, they look at it and they can quickly decide that, yes, this is a publicly exposing system and this is the vulnerable version of the software that I am using on it. So I can, uh, I can quickly update that into my uh, code base and do a new build and this build will be ready for the next push during the deployment cycle. 
So this is the this is an overview of how Informatica uh, is using AWS and Redlock to secure our customer data. I'll stop here and hand it over to Sean uh, for Q and A session. Session. Thank you so much uh, for the presentations. Definitely valuable information uh, to allow our clients and uh, your clients to understand uh, how to leverage the solutions. I would like to open up uh, to questions overall, so please do in the chat uh, ask any particular questions that you may have, um, and uh, we will address them accordingly and go forward from there. There are a couple more components that uh, we do have uh, to present on. Um, since there are no questions at this time, I'd like to hand it back to John Martinez uh, to go ahead and uh, review some other components of the Redlock solution. Yeah, thanks, Sean. So really quickly, um, just looking forward a little bit, a little bit of a, a forward looking uh, 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 kind of what we're seeing with our customers, what our customers are telling us. And we're, we're, our customers are telling us that more and more, a lot of their development teams are owning um, the very early on aspects of cloud security, of foundational cloud security. And, and what we mean by that and what we're seeing there is that we're investing a lot of time based on a lot of our customer feedback. Uh, we're investing a lot of our time in, in Redlock and Palo Alto Networks around creating more uh, DevOps-centric uh, tooling. So we're looking at embedding into the Redlock platform uh, uh, more of that shift left mentality, meaning make security much more on the forefront early on in the development cycle and, and become part of the CICD process. So, with that, you know, a lot of what you'll see in the in the near future is tooling around uh, analyzing uh, cloud formation templates, uh, around Terraform templates, and uh, Docker configurations and, and Kubernetes configurations. So the container ecosystem. So just a little bit of uh, a little bit of forward looking uh, uh, development that we're doing that you'll see in the uh, Redlock platform in the near future. So back to you, Sean. Thank you, John. Are there any other questions uh, now that we have a uh, little further explanation, a couple other components? Uh, we also have Samir, who's the solution architect from AWS on the line, who could address any AWS-specific questions. Uh, but uh, eager to hear any questions and or we could follow up on questions if, uh, if there's nothing immediate. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for attending the webinar. We thoroughly uh, enjoyed presenting this content to you. If there are further questions afterwards, please don't hesitate to reach out to AWS Direct and or your Palo Networks. Uh, we look forward to helping you in the future, secure your environment, and beyond that, have a wonderful day and uh, upcoming weekend. Take care.